I'm Kim Tudre. Hi, I'm M3 Rogers. Yo soy Jefe Moreno. And you're watching Ike On. And you're watching Ike On. Y están mirando Icon. Welcome to another edition of ICON. The prodigal son has returned. After a quick vacation to our northern neighbors up in Canada. I don't know about y'all, but I had a wonderful time. But enough about me. Let's see what MC3 is up to. Down to you, DaCosta. I love the I love this. This. Yeah. Thanks, Petty Officer Treach. Hi, I'm MC3 DaCosta, and today I'm here with Airman Peter Frischette from Barrington, New Hampshire. Today I'm here with uh, Chief Kamisha Huffman from Birmingham, Alabama. ABH2 Michael Lawrence from Raleigh, North Carolina. Lieutenant Daniel Maine from Culpeper, Virginia. How are you doing today, Frischette? I'm doing good right now. <laughs> Just so bright out. Ugh. All right, first question. How was your trip to Canada? My trip to Canada was great. I actually enjoyed the weather. It was great. Outside of this mugginess that we came back to, I enjoyed it. It was wonderful. I had a great time. It was great. It was a good time. I uh, got to see a lot of different places. Uh, it was fantastic. Probably one of the best ports I've ever been to so far. Uh, visit some historic sites. A lot of fun. The local uh, pubs and whatnot saw some of the historic sites. I actually uh, went around and enjoyed the food. I ate a lot of food. <laughs> it was great. What was your favorite meal in Canada? Probably the poutine. Poutine? Yeah. The poutine was great. I loved it. Poutine is awesome. I would have to say elk tenderloin. Elk tenderloin? Yes. What's that? Elk. <laughs> Do you mind if I, like, between the questions, I look down? Because I'll just cut it anyway. <laughs> I can't even think right now. Okay. <laughs> so are you ready for some Naval Heritage questions? Let's do it. All right. First question. What is the oldest commissioned ship in the U.S. Navy? Uh, that'd be Old Ironsides, USS Constitution. You didn't look crusty. Can you see in the camera? Who was the first person to hold the title of Admiral of the U.S. Navy? Admiral David Farragut. Correct. It's David, Admiral David Farragut. Admiral David Farragut. Yeah, okay. What does it mean to deep stick something? In the LS terms, it means to kick something over the side. Uh, to throw it away. What was the first U.S. Navy vessel named after a woman who served? Uh, USS Higby. Correct. So thank you so much, Chief. You're welcome. And roll tide. All right, back to you, Treach. Thanks, Acosta. It was really great being able to experience the sights and sounds of Canada. But we brought some sights and sounds of our own with us. Why don't you take a listen? My name is Musician First Class Surface Warfare David Gonzalez, and I'm currently the leading petty officer for United States Fleet Forces Band. It's a continued way to show our partnership with the United States and Canada and uh, continue that strengthening bond between the two nations. You know, music is the uh, international language. Everybody understands music, and uh, it definitely results more when you see smiles on faces. There's an honor to serve and be in the band and serve at that capacity and just represent our nation. I'm Lieutenant Seth Coates, Fleet Bandmaster, United States Fleet Forces Band. Music to me, it's, uh, it's something very special. Uh, it's something personal. It's been a part of my life for uh, almost as long as I've been alive. Uh, the band, we are out there performing uh, on the streets of Halifax uh, at the Scotiabank Center for the Royal Nova Scotia International Tattoo. Uh, it's a great opportunity through music uh, to reach into other cultures, to share a little bit about ourselves, to learn about others. Uh, music is a neat tool for that and it really helps engage uh, people uh, from all around the world. It's been a while since an American service band has been here, so it's a good opportunity for us to uh, have the chance to be here to be the ones to visit for the first time in a while. This program that we're performing in Halifax, uh, we've been performing it for audiences since the last week of April, so 
It's a pretty well-oiled machine at this point. It truly is a moment of excitement before we go out there and do our thing and do it to the highest level we can. So it's a pretty neat feeling. Hi, uh, my name is 81 Wilson. Um, I'm here in uh, AIMD, IM2 Division, the world's finest. Uh, I just want to give a shout out to my friends and family. Uh, I just want to say that I miss you guys and I love you and um, you know, gonna see you soon. Hey, my name is Seaman Pumphrey. Uh, I'd like to give a quick shout out to my family back home in Richmond, Virginia. Uh, I love you all and I miss you. I can't wait to see you again. Man, why do I have to do this maintenance? No one falls overboard anyways. Looks good to me. <laughs> what are you doing, sailor? Are you gun decking maintenance? Do you understand that that's the fastest way to get someone injured or even worse, killed? Follow the steps of the MRC correctly every time you do maintenance. It's written out for you. Have you ever heard of Captain's Mast? Because that's exactly where you'll end up if you ever gun deck maintenance again. I'll come back from the grave to make sure it happens. One of the best qualities of the Navy is its diversity. On Ike alone, we have sailors of different ethnic and cultural backgrounds, ages, and sexual orientation. Our next piece will highlight why glass, or gay, lesbian, and supporting sailors, is an important part of Ike's identity. Enjoy. My name is Lieutenant Matthew Fitzgerald. I am the Senior Glass Officer Mentor, and I'm also the ship's nurse. I am ATC Joyce Silkworth Mallory. I was the mentor of Glass for the last couple years. My name is MM3 Christopher Cannon. I'm the Glass 69 President, also an MSC technician down in engineering. People think that Glass is gay, and it's not gay. It's gay, lesbian, and supporting sailors. It's for anyone who just wants a safe space to talk about issues that are pertinent to them. Glass has been an association that I can truly say supports us in everything that we do, in the lifestyle we live, and the choices we make. It's a place for us to go and be comfortable, to speak freely, and to talk about the issues that we have. There are so many different personalities, and there are so many different rates, and there are so many different ranks, and everybody's come from different backgrounds and different groups, and their diversity has afforded some people the support that they were actually looking for. Uh, we have had a tremendous, tremendous amount of support from the CEO, XO, CMC, and everyone down from the Hodge to your DSLs. Sailors on board Ike are inclusive by not necessarily shunning us out as someone different, but accepting us for who we are. Hey, my name is AM3 Walker. I'd like to tell all my friends out in Douglasville that uh, I miss you all, uh, and my family as well. Miss you all, I can't wait to be home, and uh, yeah, see you all soon. Hi, I'm Seaman Casterberry, folks. I'm on the Mighty Ike. I'd like to give a shout out to my family and loved ones. Be home soon. Hi, I'm Airman Lee. Just giving a quick shout out to my fiance back home. I love you, miss you, can't wait to be home. I am the great and powerful Ikehead. Ask me your questions and be enlightened. Oh, great and powerful Ikehead, who should I contact if I want to do a community service project? The Religious Ministries Department gives the dates for any command-sponsored community service project to your departmental chain of command. Talk to your LPO. Oh, great and powerful iCare. Who do I talk to if I want to take college classes in the fall? The Educational Service Office and personnel can assist you with any college class questions you have. Oh, great and powerful iCare. Have you heard any good music on the ship lately? As a matter of fact, I have. Take it away, PS1 Isotalo. 
My name is PS1 Richard Isotalo. I'm in dispersing. I'm the deputy dispersing officer. We maintain the Navy cash program on board the ship and we manage the cash funds. Um, we handle refunds through MWR and S3. I've actually had a pretty rich musical upbringing. My parents were pretty open and pretty diverse with what kind of music they listened to. So I've always like wanted to be a musician from when I was a kid. And so uh, in sixth grade, I tried out for drums, but my, uh, my request got denied by my mom, so to speak. <laughs> uh, she didn't want something that loud in the house. In seventh grade, I decided I wanted to play guitar, and so I started playing guitar, and I realized I was really terrible at guitar. But a friend of mine had a drum set at his house, and I asked him, you know, can I jump back there, do you mind? He said, no, not at all. So I started playing and rolled around on it for a while, and after I got done, he said, well, how long have you been playing drums for? And I said, uh, about 15 minutes. And he said, well, you should definitely quit playing guitar and start playing drums, because you're a way better drummer than you are a guitar player. It just kind of made sense, so I, that's what I did. And uh, so I've been playing pretty much since I was 13 years old. The band I play in is called the Muckrakes. Um, we've been, I've been playing with them personally since 2014. It's mostly like Roots Americana music, um, Roots Rock. There's a huge amount of camaraderie uh, most of the time. Like we, we all pick on each other a lot, um, but it's, it's, it's like being friends, but there's a little bit more because you're making a bigger commitment to that person. You, you know you're going to see him at least two to three times a week. Um, and not just for playing, like we go out to other shows with each other. We do a lot of stuff outside of playing in a band together. Um, and I think that really just adds to how well we sync up on stage. Being around other people uh, from different backgrounds and stuff like that here um, has helped me a lot more in communication with people I'm playing with. Having to be able to negotiate with them to get something I want out of music or out of a song or out of a performance with them has helped me be able to get that same effect here at work. It's helped me learn to uh, talk to people a little bit better. For me, it's being on stage, playing on stage, playing in front of people. That's, I have more fun playing live than I think I do everywhere, anywhere else. It's kind of my own moment. I don't worry about anything else. I don't think about anything else. I'm just, the only thing I'm focused on is what I'm doing right there in that moment. So anything I'm dealing with at work or at home or wherever is just sidebar to what I'm doing right in that time. There will be no more questions today. Back to you in the studio, Petty Officer Treach. Thank you, Great Powerful Ikehead. That's all the time we have for today. As always, I'm your host, Petty Officer Casey Treach. Until next time, see you on the deck plates. <laughs>